Oops. This is fun. Okay. Can you see that? <laughs> ah. Have you guys had tech technological mishaps and stuff in your other classes? I imagine you have, because I'm, you know. Okay, good. Yeah, I feel I figured I would be I would know more because not to say I'm young, but newer in my job. And so there's I grew up with technology more so, you know. <laughs> okay. But anyways, um <laughs> Here we go. So I was looking at this. So you can see this now, right? Uh, COVID struggle. Yeah, seriously. I think we just need to write off this year and last year. Uh, we'll laugh. I'll laugh at this one day. Um, I was talking about ribosomes. Sorry, plasmids. I was talking about plasmids. Here, see here they're just represented. So they're, they're, they're smaller uh, DNA molecules. They're circular. Um, so they, they wrap around the double-stranded DNA, just like, just like a circle. Um, and, you know, they can range from like a thousand nucleotides long, a thousand base pairs to thousands uh, of base pairs long. And uh, essentially, as I was saying, this, this nucleoid region where the genome is the the main uh source of their genetic material and their one chromosome that encodes for all their essential proteins well that the the plasmids aren't really part of that the plasmids serve a different role they're actually uh they give bacteria certain genetic advantages um, and one primary example of that is antibiotic resistance. Uh, so they'll, they have antibiotic resistance genes encoded in plasmids, in certain plasmids. Uh, and in addition to that, they actually have this insanely unique ability. I think it might be one of the only organisms that can do this, but they can transfer plasmids to each other from one bacterial cell to another. Um, the other word for this or term is called horizontal gene transfer. So of course, most life on the planet, we pass on our genes to the next generation, to our offspring. This is vertical transmission, vertical gene transfer. transfer. What the bacteria are doing is like, if I were to go up to, if I were to go up to a stranger and hold their hand and just whatever, say a magic word, and, and their blue eyes would turn brown, or I'd give them my brown eyes, right? Or uh, my knowledge of biology, all of a sudden they're like, whoa, it's not the best example. Really, it's genetic, right? So, uh, <laughs> you know, hair color or, you know, the, my beard. That We can't do that, right? We can't transfer our genes to another organism, our traits. Well, bacteria can. And part of the reason that once one bacterial cell acquires this ability to uh, um, survive in the presence of an antibiotic, which we'll talk about in a moment, uh, they can pass that on uh, to other bacterial cells nearby. This is called conjugation, bacterial conjugation. Um, and it's part of the reason why antibiotic resistance is able to just spread like wildfire in hospitals and uh, places with a lot of people and bacteria um, because they pass it on to their offspring, meaning the newly divided bacterial cells, as well as neighboring bacterial cells. Uh, and you'll learn the details of how they do this 
if you take microbiology. Uh, but you'll want to know that that's called a conjugation for the exam. Okay, so on this topic of bacteria, further classification, really the um, defining classification. In, in microbiology, you learn that all these bacterial species have different features. And, you know, we, we talked about a few, shape, where they look, the arrangement, how many uh, form in a structural colony of cells of sorts. And, um, but the gram stain, this is called a gram stain. Both of these, like here's a gram stain, here's another gram stain of different bacterial cells. And uh, the gram stain is key because there are really two major classes of bacteria. If you're talking about E. coli, talking about um, uh, strep, strep, pyogenes, chlamydia species, um, uh, staph, whatever it is. It's either going to be gram positive or gram negative. Okay. Um, and we're going to talk about the difference. And the way you can identify what it is, is by doing what's called a gram stain. Um, and so Gram-positive bacterial cells stain purple when you do the gram stain procedure in the lab. Gram-negative bacteria stain pink. So E. coli is gram-negative. Uh, staph, Staphylococcus aureus is gram-positive. Same with Streptococcus pneumoniae and pathogenes, I believe, too. Um, so those are the two main sort of categories. Now, there's a third one um, that you can't really gram stain. Uh, these are the mycobacteria. And the reason I mention this is just because um, they're very few, they're more unique, but one of the, the, the most deadly disease in the world is caused by a mycobacterium. Does anyone know what it is, the disease? It, kills, it's the leading killer in the world. It beats cancer, it beats heart disease. The worldwide, it kills too many people. It's really bad. It's a mycobacterium. So malaria is a great, great um, uh, answer. But, so malaria is very deadly but it's not caused by bacterial uh, infection. It's not bacterial in origin. It's actually a parasitic protozoan. You'll also learn about that in micro, but uh, so it's not bacterial at all. It's eukaryotic actually. The one that's most deadly, MRSA, another great answer, but um, that's Staph aureus. It doesn't kill as many as this one. Yeah, it's kind of an unknown. It's kind of, it doesn't get enough credit uh, not credit, but attention. It is tuberculosis. Yes. Yeah. It's called, it's caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. That's the species. Uh, and it causes these crazy um, uh, granulomas uh, in your, in the lungs. Uh, but, and these are, of course, these will eventually, if progresses, it can kill you. Now, um, yes, yeah, so the, uh, the TB test is testing for your immune system if it detected any TB um, in your system. But no, it's a mycobacterium. So it's not gram positive or gram negative. So I have to mention it. It has a different cell structure, I'll say. But speaking of that, let's, let's take a look at what makes bacteria gram positive or gram negative. It has to do with their cell wall. All right. So again, what was the what was the uh, the molecule called that cell walls are made of in bacteria? We found it in Egyptian mummies. Wow. Yeah, it's an ancient killer. There's no doubt about it. 
most deadly would be rabies. So there's a difference between most deadly versus most pathogenic. The one that can take down a healthy person, that would be deadly. And then the one that is most kills the most people would be maybe the most pathogenic, I would say. Um, very widespread, disease causing. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's peptidoglycan, right? So the difference between gram positive bacteria uh, species that are gram positive and gram negative bacterial species, it's the, the uh, structure of their peptidoglycan cell wall. So we'll look at the positive first. Now, the gram positive has a very thick, large, big here, look at that, peptidoglycan layer, cell wall. Okay, has its cell membrane and then the cell wall. That's it, right? And so the gram dye, the dye in the stain is purple. So the purple, come on, the purple can adhere and stick to that cell wall very easily. It's exposed and you get these purple cells. So it's gram positive. Oh my goodness. Bye. <laughs> um, gram negative, however, is a little more interesting. So the gram negative bacteria, they actually have two membranes, two, mem oops, two membranes. So here's their cell membrane. And then within would be uh, the cytoplasm, DNA, et cetera. Uh, and then a very thin peptidoglycan cell wall, very thin, not much. And then they have an outer membrane, another membrane. Okay, because of this, uh, they, the, the purple dye can't stick to the, uh, the gram negative bacteria. It can't access that cell wall of peptidoglycan. And so you apply another dye, a pink dye, uh, and that one can actually stain uh, the gram negative cells. Um, and again, this is a gram stain. But they have a very different cell uh, structure on the outer boundary, right? Two membranes, a thin cell wall versus one membrane, and a very thick outer cell wall. Okay. 